I fixed this PCIe card with a little bit of tape, and I'm only sort of exaggerating. In one of my recent videos, I tried upgrading this AMD-based Dell Optiplex with this Intel 10 gigabit NIC, but when I installed it, the system wouldn't post. I ended up moving on to another card, but I got a really amazing comment telling me that I could fix it with tape and just Google it. Well, Google it I did, and lo and behold, it worked. So I thought it would be fun to make a quick little video explaining what this fix is and why it works, how to do it, and how it may impact you. So first, let's talk about what this fix actually is. And it's pretty simple. You just cover up pins five and six on the B side with the PCIe connector, which you can see I did here with a little bit of painter's tape. And then you just insert the card like normal and it works. But why? Well, sadly, I couldn't find a really definitive answer on this, but I tried to do my best to sort of understand what was going on here. Now, I'm no electrical engineer or anything, so I'm probably going to get a lot of this wrong. And if so, just let me know down in the comments. But essentially, pins B5 and B6 are used for SM bus data and SM bus clock. The SM bus or system management bus is used for low speed communications between different devices and peripherals. Typically, it's used for things like temperature monitoring, voltage monitoring, fan control, and battery status. I believe it's also used to communicate with the RAM to report capacity and set timings and things like that, which I think plays a role here. From what I've been able to figure out, whenever you insert this card into a non-compatible machine, this starts spewing out something on that SM bus that is causing things to break. Now, from what I've gathered, I don't think this is Dell or any other OEM trying to screw you over and not let you use this in your PC. I think it's more of a result of the SM bus standard not being so standard. I do think there's something at play here with the SM bus and communicating with RAM, because some people will get these cards to post in a system, but all of a sudden memory channels are missing or the capacity is not being reported correctly. So I think it's very possible that there's some sort of communication on that SM bus that's conflicting with how the RAM is reporting or something along those lines. In my case, however, the system just didn't post, so I'm not sure if that's also related to RAM or if this is just spitting out something that's causing the motherboard to get interrupted during the post process. That's about all I could do to figure out what's really causing this. Hopefully some smarter people out there will let me know in the comments what's really going on or what's potentially really going on. But the good news is I at least know a workaround, which is just to not let this guy spit out anything onto that SM bus. Now, if you want this to be a more permanent workaround, you could technically just scrape off those pins and have your fix there. But for a less permanent workaround, you could use something like nail polish or electrical tape, or in my case, painter's tape. I just used an X-Acto knife to cut a small little sliver, and then I covered the fifth and sixth pins on the B side, but not the A side. It's important to make sure you only cover the ones on this side. Now for me, I wrapped my piece of tape slightly around the bottom of the connector, just so that when I slot this card in, it doesn't get peeled up. And that's pretty much it. You can go chuck this in that Dell Optiplex, and it should post. And that's the fix. It's super cool. It actually reminded me of the uh, the overclocking you could do with some of the 775 CPUs by taping over some of the pads to get a small, I think it was the front side bus overclock. So really cool. I love being able to get stuff working with something as simple as tape. But what does this mean for you? Well, first of all, it's possible you already bought a card similar to this and had a similar issue and may not have even known it. While this applied to my network card, it was actually more common for me to see forum posts about used server HBAs, where people were trying to set up TrueNow servers and such. And while I've seen a lot of hate about this being a Dell issue, it doesn't seem to be just a Dell issue. It seems like this can happen on any number of brands of different cards. So if you've bought a used server card and tried to install it and it not work, there's a good chance you might be able to go back and with a small piece of tape, get that card working. For me, I thought I was gonna have to just toss a $30 network card, but hey, now I have a spare 10 gig NIC, and it even has a little fan, which is kind of nice. I also think this could just give you some confidence as a buyer if you're looking to just find a really good deal on a used NIC, HBA, or some other server card. There might be a lot of people that are hesitant to pick something up like this because it might not work in their system, but hopefully this is a tool you have now to maybe get a better deal and also keep more cards like this out of the landfill. Also, this isn't new or anything. There are a lot of posts and even videos on this, but I hadn't come across it until I got that amazing comment. Also, sorry, I don't think I'm gonna be able to pronounce your name correctly, but thank you so much. So yeah, I just thought it'd be fun to make a quick video showing you guys and maybe helping some of you out. Also, I know this was quite a bit shorter than my normal videos, so I apologize. 
This month has been kind of crazy for me and I'm fairly behind. So I thought this would be a fun, quick video to make for you guys, but also something to help me get a little bit more caught up to start making great quality content next week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and found something interesting and useful. If so, let me know in the comments. If not, let me know as well. That's about it for this one though. So thank you guys for watching. Stay curious and I can't wait to see you in the next one.